All right. We're going to have uh, an activity today, and we're going to expand on what we have done before. What I want to do is a couple things. I want to review the select statement. And um, first of all, because uh, we can go in the lab at about 1045. So it gives you 45 minutes of, of class time to work on the activity. So what I want to do is I want to define the activity first. That way, that way we can get that out of the way so whenever it becomes 1045 we can go. All right? And in any remaining time, we can maybe talk about select statements or you can talk among yourselves maybe on what you're going to need to do this. All right, here's what I want. I want a page with a text box and a button that will allow me to search through for users. Obviously, there's only a couple users in the database. You know, you feel free to add more if you want. Um, you know, just you know, make sure you have enough data to, to test it and make it work. So, the search will work like this: if you put in a name and click submit, it will show all the people whose name matches what you've put in. All right, and you should be able to do an approximate search. That is, if you put in only some characters of the, of the name, it'll pull up people whose whole name matches it. For example, if I type in Davis and do a search, or the AVI and do a search, it should match a person whose name is Davis, Davidson, David, and so on. So do an approximate search on user and pull up a list of users. All right. Show the number of polls that they have voted in. whatever that happens to be. Make a link to see voting history. And when you click on that link, take it to a page that shows the person and all the polls that they voted in and what option they picked. So, you know, vo voted in Android, iOS, or other, and selected Android. And show what category the poll is in. Lastly, if there should be a link on that that shows that's a link to the full results. And that should call my page that I've already written. So this page is already done. You should not have to change anything. So if I click on, so, so let's just follow this through. I type in DAVI, I, I do a search. Shows up these three names who approximately match it. I click on Davis, and, and, and this link shows or this shows a name, the number of uh, polls they voted in, and has a link to the voting history. I click on voting history. It shows me the person's name and shows me 
In this case, there are five votes, the five polls that they voted in, along with what their selection is, and along with what category it is. All right? There then should be a link to full results that will call my page that's already there that shows what the total voting results for that poll is. So, for example, full results would show that 40% voted uh, picked Android, 40% picked iOS, 20% picked other, or whatever those numbers happen to be. All right? Questions about this? We're using your database. Using my, my database, okay. right. I mean, you can add stuff to it if you want to. Okay. So, like, if you want to add more people in there to test your search. You know, I always, I always get people ask the question, how much data needs to be into the test database? And the real answer is uh, enough minimally, and, and again, we're not talking about load testing and making sure that it can handle, you know, thousands of rows. That kind of comes later on. But for this level of testing, you need enough rows to test to make sure stuff works, right? So, for example, if you had one user in the database and you could search and find them, that's probably not a good, adequate test. But if you had, you know, someone whose name started with DA, someone whose name didn't start with DA, you could then do a search and make sure you found the one and not the other. All right? So enough to make sure that, that you can test uh, the data. All right? So yes, you use my database. You should not have to create any new tables for this. Um, based on what I recall. Um, I, that's, that's not, you, you should be able to do this without creating any tables. So, a search, a list of users, the number of polls they voted in, a link to their voting history. The voting history shows the person's information again on the top, because otherwise you, you, you might forget who you clicked on, right? But it should show the person's information on the top, a list of all the polls they voted in, along with their vote, the category, and a link to the full results. That full results page is already done. And let me show you what I mean by the full results page. should be able to call this page. You shouldn't have to touch this page. All right. You should be able to call this page from the individual's voting history. All right. Now, obviously, you know, I'm giving you 45 minutes. So, you know, is that enough time to do all this? I don't know. May or may not be. Do what you can. Do the parts of what you can. My suggestion would be to focus on the parts that seem straightforward to you and then go in and add the rest later. <clears throat> so, for example, part of the reason I do this is I get a sense of how well you're absorbing the material. If you know how, if you have no clue how to do a search like this, that's fine. Skip it. Just show every user. All right. If you have no clue how to get the number of polls that they voted in, fine. Skip it. All right. Um, if you have no idea how to create the uh, uh, voting history link, all right. That one. Let's try to get something going on now. All right. So if you don't know how to create the voting history link that will show this, um, let's talk about it. All right. Um, feel free to talk to your neighbors about any of this stuff. My suggestion is, before we begin, in fact, this is probably what we're going to spend the time until 1045 to, 
Take a little mental inventory of which pieces of this seem pretty clear what you need to do and which pieces don't seem so clear. Think in terms of what the SQL will need to be or what kind of SQL statement you need to have. And think in terms of what controls you're going to need to have on your ASPX page. All right. Finally, if you, if you, can, if you can pull up some of this, but you can't pull up all of it, fine. Do the part that you know um, and, you know, and try to create the link that will link over to this. So, you know, it, it is what it is. You have 45 minutes to do it. Uh, you know, consider this like a, a scrimmage game, all right, a, an ungraded quiz. You know, part of it is for me to look and see, well, okay, we've, we've done this for a few weeks now and we've had a few assignments similar to this. Let's see what, let's, let's see where everyone is at. All right. I'd kind of like you at some point near the end of the class, that is around the 1130 mark, to um, show me where you're at, just so I get a sense of where you're at. By all means, you can ask me whatever questions you want. All right. But I'm putting a little condition on it. And that is, ask at least one other member of the class first before you ask me. All right. I'm not doing that to be difficult or anything. It's not like, you know, gee, you know, that way I can catch up on my sleep or something. You know? I do that because explaining to people how to do something is um, a good way to, to solidify it in their own mind. So, you know, get a chance to sort of share and collaborate on things like this. The other thing, too, is, I mean, it's certainly possible in doing a search that someone might know one piece of this, another person might know the other piece of that. And by getting you talking, you can learn off of each other. That being said, you know, don't spin your wheels. If <clears throat> you make it to a point and you can't progress any further and you've asked a classmate, by all means, you know, pull me over and, and we can go over it. So this is what I want. It will consist of you making two pages and linking to my third page. All right, any questions about what you need to do? I'm getting a really weird picture of me and a shadow silhouette on the camera. I look like, uh, what's Alfred Hitchcock, I think. All right. As Halloween approaches, we're going to have to work on the lighting to give me an even more evil look as I come up with these sort of assignments. All right. <laughs> Between now and 1045, which is about 10 minutes away, sort of take a mental inventory, talk among yourselves, think about what you need to do this. All right. I had intended to go over some SQL stuff, but I think the time is better spent by you planning what you're doing. See, this is forcing you to do some design. Right? You don't have a computer in front of you, or many of you don't have a computer in front of you. All right? I guess it isn't forcing you, because you could just think happy thoughts for eight minutes. But at any rate, have at it. Let me know if you have any questions. And at 1045, we'll move to the lab.